everyone and welcome to Gossip Railworks. My name is James and today we're doing another Rolling Stock review. This time we are looking at the Grand Paris LNER Thompson Coaches. And these are absolutely gorgeous. Very nice teak uh, livery on them. Uh, you can also get these in uh, LNER Crimson and Cream. But uh, before we get into discussing the details of these, let's get all the boring bits out of the way. I've only got the uh, three teak ones. So uh, let's just get the product codes for them done. And it is uh, for the uh, what is it? first class corridor, it is 376-200. For the composite corridor, it is 376-225. And for the uh, third brake corridor, it is 376-275. Uh, and that's all in LNR teak. And these are the Thompson coaches, so uh, yes, very nice. And uh, inside them you do get uh, a detail pack, which does look like it's just vacuum piping and stuff like that, and also some fake couplings. So yeah, that's that done. And uh, yes, let's have a quick wave of them. Put that there. Get you, there's a need you on there. Yeah, that's zeroed off. A quick way of them. Um, 23.3, 22.8, 23.6. Let's just say 23 grams. And that is roughly in line with uh, the Ferris Mark 1s, which are about 25 grams. So a bit lighter than them. But yes, these are the Grand Paris LNER Thompson coaches and they look absolutely wonderful in the fake, well I say fake, uh, in, even in real life it wasn't actually teak, these are uh, steeled bo uh, bodied but uh, that, that detail on there is really nice, it does look like wood if I just zoom in you will have a proper look on the close up but uh, just let's have a look here. That is rather nice. I have to really commend uh, Rob Backman Grand Paris on the design, of, well, on the absolutely work which they've done on these. Uh, luckily, it hasn't actually bumped the price up all that much. So the price for any of them is £33.95p. Uh, so yes, that's rather nice. So I'll just zoom out a little bit to so see a bit better. And uh, yes, they only come in three var uh, varieties. I'm not sure if that's pretty typical, but it's the only ones that they have, which is the third break, which we've got here. Uh, we've got the uh, composite and also the first. Uh, they're all cold or coats as well. But on uh, also just mentioned they have got NEM pockets and also the wheels have this very nice lining on it as well so again I have to commend uh, Graham Ferris on the, the amount of detail which they've added here and uh, also if you can see in the windows for the first class coats and also the uh, uh, composite one they have got blue curtains as well however it is only on the uh, non cold or side, which really confused me earlier when I had a was it, I looked at uh, the composite one and said, Oh, there's blue windows. Why Why isn't there any on the first class one? You'd expect there would be. No, I was looking on the wrong side, I was looking on the cold or side, which actually does make sense. Uh, also, mentioned that the uh, tampo printing or whatever it's called is also top notch as well. There's a uh, the, uh, a linear name right here, which is very well. I say it's very clear. It's a bit difficult to tell, but well, to pick out it might just be because the lighting all on it is uh, making it a bit difficult to see for me. Uh, there we go. Yeah, that's quite clear. Uh, obviously, in, in each windows, it does have a little one representing that it is first class. Uh, the door handles. Well, they're not separately fitted, they are very... Well, I don't think they're separately fitted. No. But 
they are very nicely picked out in a goldy brass colour so that works out quite well. Uh, the lavatory is on either end, I'm assuming they're lavatories anyway, uh, got nice frosted glassing there and the end also has the same wood effect and on the bottom you do have a fair amount of under frame detail so that quite, that's quite nice. And the same is also on the co uh, composite, apart from uh, no first class, obviously in the uh, third class area of it. Uh, all of them do have running numbers. Uh, and again, it's still the same amount of detail on the bottom as well, and on the ends. And I would like to mention on the uh, break is that even these little windows up here, because I do think they are windows, you can see just about through them, whether whatever is inside, as there is some uh, detail on the inside of the coats that uh, blocks the way. But otherwise, they are rather nice. Again, on all the uh, handrails, they are picked out in goldy brass colour. I think it's probably more gold. And I would expect that was on the BR coloured or liveried coaches. So uh, yeah, that's a very nice look at them. Hmm. And as far as I can tell, they all are free rolling. But we'll have a look at that when we get onto the layout. But first of all, let me tell you a bit more about the uh, Thompson. Uh, the uh, detail on top is also rather nice as well. I forgot to mention that. But uh, let me tell you a bit more about the prototype and also show you uh, close ups of them on the turntable. So I'll see you in a bit. Shortly after the appointment of Edward Thompson as Chief Mechanical Engineer, the LNER implemented a post war building program of over 4,000 coaches to replenish their outdated rolling stock. With suitable materials scarce to continue manufacturing Thompson's predecessor, Nigel Gresley's teak coaches. Thompson designed a new series of all steel corridor coaches. These new designs were revised several times due to further material shortages and the coaches were finally built from 1947 to 1950 with steel bodies over teak frames. The teak finish of the Gresley stock led to the first livery of the Thompson stock with an ersatz teak effect over the steel body panels to give continuity of livery. With LNER lettering and numbering, this was a relatively short-lived livery until the removal of the lettering once nationalisation arrived in 1948. The teak livery lasted, often looking very drab, through to the repainting into caramel and cream coating stock livery after 1949. Most of the vehicles were scrapped in the mid-1960s with the last catering stock going in 1968 and the sleepers in 1970 being outlasted by the last Gresley stock. The earlier coaches had square edged windows and the later British Rail builds had curved edged windows to reduce corrosion problems. Right, here we are with the Thompson coaches all on my Boston Port layout. And as you can see, they look rather nice all together. Uh, have got the uh, non corridor side all pointing towards me. Uh, maybe not on the uh, brake but uh, it will look silly otherwise. So uh, yes, let's just see how free rolling they are all together. And I would say that's extremely free rolling. Yes, I'm quite pleased with that. But let's see how well it couples up with a loco. And here we have my Ferris V2, a very, uh, well, very appropriate loco to attach to some LNER coaches because it's in a lovely LNER green. Uh, which way have I got it? The wrong way. Uh, this is only DC, so, uh, hmm, let's try it again. Mm, a bit of force to connect there, but it has coupled up. I uh, would also like to point out, just before I get it all rolling, how close these two are coupled together. There's a very close coupling. 
No. Well, if these were expand, no extendable, no uh, cold or connections, you, you know, it would be very nice to see. I do know that you can get to third party uh, little uh, blocks to put in between there, so it does look like it's coupled together, but a um, bit of a downside. But uh, still, it looks absolutely gorgeous. So, so I thought there was something on it, but uh, no, that's that's how it's meant to look. Anyway, let's get the V2 rolling. It is, I think it's uh, Cold Stream. I think it is Cold Stream. I don't think it's got tracks and tires, and as you can see, it has no issues pulling these very free rolling. Co uh, coaches. Unfortunately, it is an older loco, so it's not the best runner. It does need a bit of power. See you there, or oh, I need to clean it. <laughs> Let's just give it a bit more power. Normally solves everything. And that looks absolutely wonderful. Also, so about the noise, it's like I said, it's an older echo. Okay. I'm just going to bring it to a stop. And I think that worked out quite well. Looks like these are sub. Uh, second radius so it's tighter than second radius but not as uh, tight as first radius curves that's my uh, inside line anyway so they will go around that without any issues i don't know about uh, first radius uh, from the looks of the bogies they do look like they should be able to maybe a bit of a complaint because uh, i said that's a very close coupling and it may have a few issues around uh, second radius uh, not second radius, first radius but uh, I don't know. It may be that uh, it may look like it's a bit off, but it, should, it may work fine. Now let's see. Any downsides? Uh, one, one which is probably just a nit, uh, me nitpicking is that they are a bit. Uh, as you can see, they are a bit awkward to uncouple. That might just because they're quite co uh, closely coupled. Um, if I get an example of my Mark 1s, they are much more further away so they don't have any uh, issues uncoupling. But like I said, that's just me nitpicking and it's probably not really much of an issue if you replace it, uh, decouplings or get uh, magnetic couplings or something like that. It's probably not going to be that much of an issue because you'll probably just uh, might be able to bend down, so it should be alright. But they couple up quite nicely. They look absolutely fabulous. As I said I can't really get over the fact that they are uh, wood pack. Well, a very nice wood effect. Now, do you think they? Well, do I think that they are worth? Uh, basically £34 each. Uh, well, for me, as a rule, a rule one purchase, because uh, I'm Southern and these are for Northeastern, uh, I do think they're worth it because they look absolutely gorgeous. However, if you're just specifically buying them because you're modelling Northeastern, uh, well, these were only used in a very late period of LNER, 
and also they were used in BR times as well. So if you if you're buying the teak ones, you have a very narrow uh, time frame to use them. However, the uh, BR ones, you probably have a lot a lot more uses out of them. As far as I can tell, most people have actually bought the uh, crimson cream ones. So uh, yeah, that's probably the reason why. Anyway. I think they're quite nice. Let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna send this uh, train on its way. So uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this review. I also hope you've enjoyed these coats as well because they're very nice and I hope you think think the same. So uh, yeah, anyway, I'm gonna send them off. I hope you enjoyed it. And I, I said, don't forget to do all that YouTube -y stuff like uh, subscribing, commenting, liking, favoriting, all the other things. If not, hope you enjoy your day anyway. So take care now, and I'll see you again next time. Bye bye. I really should run my V2 more often. <laughs> Let's just wait till it comes here.